What up, hey. yo, Milo? What it do? <laughs> hey, man, man, how you doing over there, boss? Man, I'm all right, I'm all right, man. I Just chilling at the crib. Hey, man. Boy, how y'all doing? Man, feeling we good. We ready to play, crazy. boy. Yeah, yeah. Kilo, how are you feeling about this parking lot concert that's about to go all the way up tomorrow, man? Man, I think it was a uh, brilliant motherfucking idea. <laughs> Man, I think it's a brilliant idea, and I'm looking forward to um going out there and having fun, man. That 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 heightness yeah. of getting everybody to know everybody loves a lot of anyway. Exactly. Now we can have it. Um, uh, <laughs> everybody loves loves corner store parking lot deep in their heart, ghetto. You know, what I mean? you know, hanging out at the goddamn store. <laughs> exactly. So um. I think it's going to be nice, man, when you can bring your own four friends, five friends, however, have your shit in the trunk, pop your trunk, drink yourself, and just have your own vibe. So, yeah, I love it. I mean, speaking of the vibe, Kilo, can you take me back to day one, man, when you jump off that porch with that cocaine and shut the city down, man? Oh, yeah. Man, I, I, I had so much fun. And when I was a young man, I I I, I had fun. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I see the same thing nowadays. You know, it never stops, you know what I'm saying? They still do the same thing we did, mm -hmm. and it's just a new new upgrade of a tax bracket and, and jewelry. You know what I'm saying? It's everything just updated, but um the circle is still coming around. Fashion just turns around, man. How do you feel about your style, though, Kilo? Because, I mean, you was the first one to come in there rapping and singing at the same time. And to hear that style right. still be relevant to this day, how does that make you feel? And do you feel like these boys pay enough homage to you bringing it to the game like that? Say, say it again, I can't hear you. I said, with you being the first one with the style, with the rapping and the singing at the same time, and then seeing right. everybody still doing it right now to this day, how do you feel seeing your style still going crazy? Well, I think, um, you know, since we're all from the South, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's like uh, referring to I'm speaking, it's like when your grandma house is nothing but a two-bedroom house, a side porch, and living room, and the bedroom, that same children going to play in that same area. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be in that same box. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So by that, I'm saying, and where else to go? <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that's, it's the truth for Atlanta rappers to uh, have rhythmic um, uh, rhymes and stuff like that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Poetry, rhyme, and kind of just, they've been doing it forever, man. I love, I love them saying they're mimicking me. But I have to give it to my teachers before me who was actually giving me rhythm and rhyme. Like Bobby Blue Band was a, a fan. I was a fan of Bobby Blue Band, uh, Tina Turner, yeah. um, Rod Stewart. Yeah. If you want my body, Ed, you think of that. <laughs> you remember that song? Yeah. So, um, you know, those type of bands are uh, cool in the game. So I feel great. I feel great. Um, but you know, as a living legend, nobody want to want to praise you because you're still living. It, it, it's that's the only thing I have about the legend, quote unquote thing, is it's harder to live than it is to be dead when you did some good work for these cultural people because they don't want to give you, they don't want to praise you while you're alive, but they wait till you die and then have a puppet. Or so to speak, someone who's frozen. So they can put the words in your mouth for you and your attitude. So hey man, I I could I, I'm just gonna do me and live, you know what I'm saying, knowing that you know Kilo really died like when the house burned down in eighty and ninety eight. You know, mm -hmm. so I had a good year run, I had a good good time. So he that my artist really died like in uh, 1980, mm -hmm. 1998. Yeah. But, but my spirit's still alive, man. Long live my spirit. Well, and right. it keeps my body keep going, man. But, you know, all these old compliments about this and that, people don't really mean it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We got a couple people who do mean it, uh, and I'm glad that some of them are promoters. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. So, and I think <clears throat> this thing... This thing's gonna beat the stimulus thing. Mm -hmm. I think the, that that kind of concert is the future. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm um, proud of, you know, the, at this age, being able to catch on and do something that should, that futuristic artists are going to have to do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, you got to say your coffee getting to see you now, but, you know, but it's, it's going to be nice. Uh, I like the stage setup where they doing that shit like twenty feet up in the air, ain't it? Yeah. And you looking down, so nigga gonna see you is just like a drive-in movie <laughs> concert. As long as they have it clear, clear, cleaned off enough where you can see the artist, you know, perform his song, man. Yeah. With all the niggas on the stage packed all around, that's one thing it's gonna save. It's gonna save. A lot of niggas just jumping up on stage mm -hmm. and and bouncing around, but yeah, I, I I can't wait. I just can't. Wait. I'm excited. I gotta ask you about one of my favorite songs, Kilo. Lost y'all mind, man. Talk to me right. about that banger right there. Lost y'all mind. Some of y'all that lost y'all mind is still relevant to this day, man. How do you feel when you listen to that song and you look around and it's like? Some of y'all done lost y'all damn mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, everything's, you know, we create a lot of stuff in the back of our head yeah. that in, in time develops to be, you know what I'm saying? It comes to be. So I, I'm pretty, I pretty pretty much move. I ain't been moved because them niggas had lost their mind a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some of the people that I had saw, and they still on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it feels good to be a writer. You know what I'm saying? That's when you know that more than a rapper, you was a writer. You know what I'm saying? I was a, I was a good writer. Yeah. So the longevity of my writing, I, it speaks for itself. I, I, I like and I appreciate you saying that, you know, hey, man, that's still relevant to the day, man. Yeah. So I was before my time a little bit. Well, I mean, a lot of your music, though, Kilo, because even with that song, that was a conscious song, but your party music still go hard in the club right now, too. You say what? I said your party music still go hard in the club right now, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, show me love, baby, baby. Um, uh, love in the mouth, but them things go hard right now. And I'm still eating off stuff I did like 20 years ago, so I can't, I can't, I can't be. I'm, I'm this to to date. It should be uh, 30, 33 years in the game. Yeah. So 30, yeah, 33 years of uh, music. Um, I love it, man. I love, I love playing. I, I still love uh, performing. Now, I know you got a new song with that boy, College Park, man. That yeah. Hunchy. Talk to me about that right there. Yeah, the Hunchy. Man, that was a good, that's a good little song, man. We we came up with original kilo patterns. When me and College Park get to working, you know, he he he, he old-fashioned at, at tech, you know what I'm saying? So he yeah. know how to deal with artists like a kilo or from the um, 90s, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those type of artists know how to uh, say, hey, you're tired. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> hey, get the hell out of my studio. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was real technical. I got the phrase hunchy from, uh, I was getting a dance at Blue Flame, mm -hmm. right? And the girl so I saw, I said, you know, I asked the girl how much she solicit for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She said, a couple of hunches. I said, so what? She said, a couple of hunches. I said, say what? She said, a couple of hunches, man. <laughs> a couple of hunches, man. <laughs> so I said, ah, oh, man, it stuck with me. I said, hunches. Because I couldn't hear because, you know, she dancing. And she yeah. trying to say hundreds. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? A couple of hunches. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wanted to do something on that style because she tripped me out, man. You know what I'm saying? So I, I did it in the name of uh, – when I'm writing bass songs, everybody want me to write another bass song. I want to write a soliciting, you know what I'm saying? When you go back to the club nowadays and using a new technique of writing, mm -hmm. shit, these niggas are talking about solicitation. <laughs> so that's, she probably can use that, you know what I'm saying? So I write for the dance. Uh, she said, a couple of hundred. <laughs> So now, I did with a couple of hundred. Huh? I got to ask you about one of my favorite albums of all time, though, Kilo. 
that organized based album, man. Yeah. You got with organized yeah. noise, man. What was that like when y'all went in that studio crafting that album right there? Man, um, <clears throat> working with the dungeon. See, I have I was originally supposed to be in Outcast. Oh. Actually. Yeah, um, you know, we we had uh we had talks about getting this group together. I, I met Rico Wade, went down to the first dungeon. This way for my deal. Went down to the first dungeon and we they were talking about chemistry, putting some guys together to make this one little group they want. Yeah. You know, they didn't have the name yet. But uh, he was saying, yeah, yeah, I want, I want Kilo to be in it. I, 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 I see three of them. I see two of them. I see two or three of them. He wanted more than one. Mm -hmm. So I had already, but a week prior to that, I had already signed a deal with uh, Ichiban Records. Mm -hmm. So that threw me. I had to deal with Ichiban where I had signed. I had already had an album. I had that first album out, Cocaine. Then they were coming with um we started making uh outcasts and doing the dungeon stuff when I was on my second album. They were still down in the first dungeon. But um yeah, man, I actually I actually uh was down with that team way before that. So but working with them I after after my the five year deal was over, mm -hmm. you know, and I got freed up from my contract, he did sign me. Mm -hmm. You know uh <clears throat> salute to Rico Wade, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. man gave me a a meal ticket back then. A meal ticket oh. was a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a blessing to know that you got a meal ticket to sign. You know, I bought the house and all that type of stuff, and it was a great man. I got to um see some of the greatest artists in the world. You know, what I'm saying we sitting all down stairs in the house with with um. You know, Andre Three Stacks, you know what I'm saying? Big Boy over there, you know what I'm saying? Bree Cool Breeze in there. You know, everybody was there, man. It's about 15 other artists down here, you know what I'm saying, in the dungeon. So it made it, it felt so good to reach out and touch artists, you know what I'm saying? You could reach out and, and, and talk how you want to and be who you want to be and be comfortable with uh, making music. Because everybody got a record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was in a position where everybody had a record. And um, we were signed to Interscope Records at that point in time. So, you know, it was beautiful, man. I was going back out to L.A. doing this. I was out in L.A. when Big got shot. That was the biggest thing that happened on that deal. You know what I'm saying? Biggie got shot in um, 97, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we was out there. You know what I'm saying? At that point in time, actually... You know, Latifa, I'm trying to get me some pussy, man. You know, <laughs> I, hey, well, I'm trying to get every hole in goddamn L.A., man. <laughs> I'm a country nigga, so I done told Latifa, hey, girl, you got some big-ass boobies. Well, me and you just going to get married. By her being a professional, she knew I was drunk. <laughs> but I didn't know how she knew me because she said, um, no, nigga. You ain't going to Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston, me. I said, God damn, I don't know me. <laughs> I said, God damn. Man, that's your whole way up here, man. <laughs> I said, man, that shit all the way up here, man. You know, but I have to be a little, you, you don't want to steal them. You steal. The frame is still. You smile like a motherfucker. <laughs> Hello? No, I'm still in here. I'm still in here, man. So now, yeah, so the, yeah, so the, I, I loved it, man. I, I was out there. I remember I asked, um, who that tiny? I asked Tiny to marry me on the plane, man. She, she wanted to marry a pretty Tony. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I asked Tiny to marry. Hey, man, I was at SWV. <laughs> I was going, you know, at that point in time, everybody was hooking up with holes and getting the pocketbooks, you know. So I was like, man, I'm going to get me a rich hole while I'm still rapping. Get me a pocketbook. <laughs> but the hole knew me from all the way out there. <laughs> 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 so that run that shit all the way around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, real bankhead. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, talk, we, talk to yeah. me about coming off a of bankhead with it, though, man. What was it like being the first person off a of bankhead to put the sit on the mouth? Well, it was it was beautiful, man. You know, I'm I'm originally from uh, East Atlanta, yeah, for real. I'm from like Moreland Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, 
right around that area, East Atlanta, Moreland, and uh, let me see. I, I would think, um, yeah, I'll just say that. But East Atlanta, really. So I came from East Atlanta over to a, a decade up and born home. My grandparents, actually my grandma was staying there in the 60s. Mm -hmm. She moved out to Decatur, to DeKalb County. That's where I had moved to. Yeah. My aunt was raised by my grandparents. Uh, then I moved back with my mom over in Born Home. You know what I'm saying? Because I went out there, man, it was so free. I don't know if everybody got a chance to experience the projects, mm -hmm. but the projects for black people, that's what they're missing now. I, I don't want to get into it, but the project for black people kept a sense of... Uh, Honestly about it, a sense of tradition about it. Where mm -hmm. you can go over this person's house and get some bread, you go over here and get some sugar, you can yeah. always do something. So I stayed at the barn home from I got at the barn home in um eighty three. I think it was eighty three when I first started popping in the barn home, I'm a little kid, and I was like, damn, little teenage kids going to parties. They were still doing house parties and this mm -hmm. and that. And I said, God damn. These little nine-year-old kids and 12-year-old kids are partying at 1 o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? That's what had me excited because I'm coming from being the cab kind of my grandma's house. And you don't go on the bed at 8.30. <laughs> they be on the bed at 8.30. So I was really um, happy to be out there and be out at freedom. All that freedom just exploded. It exploded through me. And I had to express that through music. So by being the first kid out of there, man, I had my um, first album party at the Bounce. They just called it the African Jump down there. Mm -hmm. And, the man, I had to go cross color. So I don't know if you remember that. The yeah. cross colors, with got the suede cross color on them. <laughs> and you got yellow, red, green, got you know. And uh, it was fun. <laughs> and then it was the best of both worlds. You know, I could I could go get on a plane, uh, shoot to uh, Detroit, do a show, whatnot, shoot back home, get off the plane, get out the limo, get drive to the truck, and they let me all ride in a project. You know what I mean? <laughs> Drop the nigga off and born home. Let's go. You know, so I had fun. No place like B Town. Born home, what's up? What was the point in your career, Kilo, where you felt like you made it, man? Uh, I don't know, man. The 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 first that first deal was with Arvis Records, mm -hmm. and uh, I I dropped I made I recorded the album in eighty eight. Mm -hmm. It didn't drop to ninety. So when one morning I was in the bed and um, cause we had a adult drought in like uh eighty nine. It was a mm -hmm. big ass drought in eighty eight, eighty nine, somewhere around there. And I was you know working for. You know, don't worry, it's like all rappers were probably <laughs> trap. It was trap shit then. <laughs> so I was waiting on the money to come back. So one morning, um, Jarvis came, knocked on the door. I went downstairs. My mom called me. I go downstairs. And he shows me my album cover. You mm -hmm. know? He shows me my album cover. I said, oh, man. He said, they pushed up. They back, man. We sold 60,000 copies out of the trunk. Those, those are days. When you could go to um, Third World Enterprises was still open, mm -hmm. uh, record stores were open back then. You know what I'm saying? You go straight to the record store and sell out the box. You can mm -hmm. sell them uh, 30, 30 CDs. You can sell them 40 CDs and just do what you want to. So independent life was off the chain, man. Mm -hmm. I, I loved yeah. it. Um, and that's when I first felt like I made it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? When they came back with the report, we ordered uh, – 80,000 records, CDs and tapes and everything, and they were, so, they were sold out. I said, this is out the trunk before my, before my big uh, major deal. So, man, I, I, I made it. You know what I'm saying? That's when I first feel like I made it. Talk to me about Freak Nick Kilo. Performing, doing Freak Nick, having your music be the soundtrack of the party. What was that like? Man, you know, you know originally, Freak Nick... Uh, Nobody performed that freak me. You every every individual car was a performance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bitches, yeah. Uh, the nigga be coming through there. You know, beating, boom, 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 beating. Shit, hit his shit might get blasted out by a goddamn Corvette behind him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it was no, 
the original Freak Nick was um, no performances at all. Yeah. You know, I don't know who came up with that. They, they just came back up with that just to honor uh, the old things we used to do. But mm -hmm. it was a college, it was a college thing. And then what what made it a nudity thing was Project Women. You know, pro, we all projects was up there. So mm -hmm. Project Women gonna put on their best shit, go down there and get those some college niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they were like, fuck this shit. And then you know, college girls at that time. <laughs> college girls at the time want to go and get fucked by nine niggas at one day. You know what I'm saying? Some girls, some girls was exciting. They want to, you know, you can actually, if you were a college girl and you go to school down here, your mom and them live in Texas, everybody you know live in Texas, you down here by yourself in college. So nobody's going to know that they ran that thing on you that night, man. It was a, it was a chance for all girls to vent. You know what I'm saying? Girls... Man, women uh, started venting in the streets on top of the car, on the back of the car. Man, you could park when you um, Greenbrier w was blocked off. So you, if you, if you had to get off of Greenbrier, you fucked up. So they, they'll take you from Greenbrier all the way downtown to. Um, I had to. You got to go all the way down to downtown because you could get out your car and walk and order a sandwich. Nigga was barbecuing on the expressway. <laughs> Nigga, no lie. No lie, niggas was barbecuing on the expressway. You can go down there, walk down there, all your sound. By the time your car get down here, your <laughs> sound is red. <laughs> so it was, it was a nice time. I never personally uh, participated in free. What? That's the real. That's the, that's the real truth. I never personally, cause we had ninety one. I'm thinking 90, 91, 92, 93, 94. Nine five was the that was the, that was the end, you know what I'm saying? That was the end of the when ninety five, but that shit was big. But uh, I never, I, cause I already already been freak nicky. We made the freak nicky. I was I was got stuck. I went to freak nicky one time and got stuck in it, cause I was going to pick up these two girls to 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 go have my own little freak nicky. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna be my own, and they got them. Block the goddamn motherfucking ramp off. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to freak nigga. <laughs> but by 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 um worshiping us now and uh one see the city jam now, man, I, I feel that's beautiful having that spirit in this parking lot concert. That's right. It reminds me of that feel way exactly. more. Exactly. You know, it's the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? It was it's gonna be like a traffic jam mm -hmm. that you yeah, hey, I just Want to be in the traffic jam right now? You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, it's a good thing. For those that are on here trying to get them tickets to the parking lot concert, go to at parking lot concert on Instagram and get your tickets on deck ASAP because tomorrow it's going all the way up. Kilo doing all, all the way Oh my God, it's gonna be a movie, man. Kilo, yeah. <laughs> I love you, bud. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, take it easy. Hello.